So in today's video, we are going to be talking about how the market is kind of going against everything that we know. On top of that, we'll be covering everything that's been released in the last 24 hours and any investments. But before we do start, if you guys are interested, I do offer a daily subscriber trading guide. Uh, it is free of Amazon Prime. It is either £5, €5 Euros, or $6. You get a daily updated trading guide with daily updated investments, daily updated trading data, and lists of players that go and sell on lazy buyers. All you got to do is to click on the top link of the description uh, and it will give you a direct link. So let's go and talk a little bit about the content that was released in the uh, last 24 hours before we move on to talking about how the market isn't really doing what we expected, which is uh, a little bit worrisome. Okay, so the player SBCs, again, we kind of have been expecting a Wobi SBC, we've been expecting a, what is it, a Raheem Sterling, uh, what's it called, Total Rush SBC, but we didn't get either. Instead, all we got was another set of foundations. Um, now, some people were talking about buying Saudi Omani for these, talking about buying Neymar for these, but really, foundations have never really done anything too much. Now, I would definitely say that maybe this is the first... Maybe other than maybe La Liga F, this is the first like minor or the first foundations where the minor league is probably used a little bit more than the next. But yeah, didn't really create a crazy player. We got ourselves, you know, he's basically three and eight, four rated with one team a week. A lot of people have that stuff in their club. Four star skills, five star weak foot. Um, yeah, 80 shooting, 86 dribbling, 87 pace. It's kind of behind par. Uh, he's got a few player role pluses there. He's obviously got himself um, two shooting play stars and uh, three dribbling play stars, including, what's this one called again? First touch plus. Um, so again, a very mediocre card, but the problem is you've always got to, you know, if you don't have Saudi players in your club, it's going to be a little bit more awkward to link in. If you guys don't how these cards work as well, these cards do get an additional league link. So uh, instead of counting as one Saudi Arabia, one... Al Hilal and one uh, Saudi Arabian League, it now counts as two Saudi Arabian Leagues. So it can help you guys to go and get more chemistry. But still, nonetheless, I don't think he's uh, too insane. Along with him, we do have ourselves some objectives, of course. This is just how it always works. Uh, been absolutely grinding through some squad battles, completing objectives. So this is why uh, we've completed some here. In fact, I think I've already completed. Yeah, I've already completed two of them. The players you get back from these are so subpar, it's insane. A left back. Yeah, he doesn't even have 80 plus all stats and he's got 84 pace. And he's from literally one of the, um, what's it called? He's from one of the completely like, rubbish clubs in the Saudi League, basically. Obviously, strong links for Ronaldo, so I guess that's that. Uh, and then we got Viego for completing the whole group. Again, you know, four 80s on a centre mid, especially with how hard these are to link up. Very, very subpar. Maybe, maybe down the line he'll go and fit in Evo. But apart from that, yeah, not looking anything too insane with the likes of the Saudis. Uh, now on top of that, we went and got ourselves an Eva, and this is where me and, uh, well, this is where we made a bit of money on stream. As always, do make sure to go and join the streams. We do stream from six o'clock, well, eight o'clock in the morning, all the way to uh, half six every single day. So the new Evo we got yesterday was a free one. It was slow it down. So, just like how some people say I should uh, do my videos, let's go and talk about the upgrade. So the upgrade went and gave you a uh, maximum pace, or well, a, a pace upgrade up to 21 with a maximum pace of 80. Then when it gave you plus 10 shooting no matter what. And then it also when it gave you 10 dribbling with a maximum up to 75. Play styles it gave was Relentless and Bruiser. And of course, if someone can fit set a mid or fullback, I absolutely love them having Relentless. Although I wouldn't exactly love my fullback having 80 pace. So um, yeah, some, some decent upgrades. Again, a lot of these uh, Evos are like small upgrades, but you throw them in a few combos and they're looking nice. So what we did, we what we recommended my chat to go and buy was Botman. How I work out what I recommend people to buy, all I do is I go players, I then go evolved, and then the first thing I'll always go and check is the prem. And you can see Botman right there is a bit of a standout. He's the highest rated by a few ratings uh, with 80 pace. I actually recommended Botman uh, up to 1.2 and he went to 4k. Uh, Carlos up to 800 coins, Ming's up to 800 coins. Do I recommend anything else on that? I don't think so. Actually, no, I did. I had some uh, outside shouts, actually. So my outside shouts were to go for, if I can head to Evolve, Devridge, because I thought Devridge could have been maybe well demanded because of the Turam links. Uh, and then something I also went for or recommended was Germa. And if I go and find her, because I thought, well, she's same club as a thingy, maybe she can do well. I don't think Germa really did too well yesterday. I think we recommended her up to 800 yesterday. Yeah, uh, she went up to 1.2. She went up, but it wasn't anything too insane. Again, my idea was that she could do really well because of how hard it was to link up with the NWSL players. Well, again, let's go look at some of the popular players. We've got Diassi, and it's kind of a thrown for 101 SBCs, and then you get a very mediocre card. Okay, it's, it's, it's not too crazy, this one. Not compared to, I think in my team, I have a Joe Gomez with like 89 pace or something like that. So, 
I think that is the problem, is this uh, this Evo isn't, yeah, exactly. I've got Joe Gomez here with 89 pace, 82 defending, and 81 physicality. So these are basically the same card, minus the uh, the eight, well, minus the 89 pace. So that's why I don't think it's too good. Christensen, again, gives him an upgrade, but I just think it looks very subpar. 80 pace, 85 physical, 76, uh, sorry, 76 physical, 85 defending, very subpar. Botman's done not look too bad, 80, 83, and 80. Again, though, you, you know, you, you put this on a promo card, it's probably only 20k even in the Prem. Uh, and that was about that. So yesterday's content, nothing too insane. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the market because it's really weird. Yes, so the market basically has gone against like two trends. So when the market goes against one trend, fair enough, you know, it can sometimes vary year to year. But it's kind of gone against two trends. So the two ways how the market, in my opinion, has gone against two trends is maybe one trend and a half. Is the first one is that last week the more top tier players really didn't drop over the weekend or they didn't drop much whatsoever so if i go and grab something like putellas i can go hourly and we can go show you the last 14 days uh, or i can show you daily even and she didn't drop too badly over the weekend if i can go and find it we can see friday she was 5 30 saturday she was 5 15 sunday she was 5 15 uh, and then monday again she started to rise so last week what happened was again the market barely dropped on the top tier players um, and if it follows what normally happens, it's like the first week the market drops, the second week the market rises. Because uh, the first week we have a significant increase in supply, but the second week people now have a significant increase in coins, so they go and buy the players. But that didn't really happen this week. So what we would have expected actually, and what happened last year, I think I can even go and grab you Putellas from last year, is that as soon as we got the Friday 6pm content, after 6 p.m., the market then rose. So I can show you this right here. And again, I understand Putell has had a what if card, but this happened to everyone. So what happened last year, we got to the Friday and then the market rose and rose and rose and really, you know, rose very, very nicely. Well, we didn't really see that happening. You, you know, we see the Friday, she was, she was 523, then she was down at 505, she's still 505. So the first trend is that they're going against the drop for the first week and the rise for the second one. And again, the second trend they're kind of going for is that they barely dropped last week. Therefore, we expected a way better rise because last year, Putellas uh, from here to here dropped, I think it was like 300k. And again, it, there were other cards that dropped a high portion, uh, even the ones that weren't in the packs. So they dropped again a very, very high amount. And then what happened in the second week, they rebounded. And because they didn't drop as much last week, we thought, do you know what? Because they haven't dropped much last week. That means that uh, the drop is less, which means the rise should be more. And the reason the rise should be more is because it sh if the drop is less, it shows that there isn't a significant supply to demand increase. So we should see the second week when there last year was a significant demand to supply increase should be even more this year. But it just wasn't. And it, again, it isn't across the board. So it's, it's kind of interesting, again, that they go against trends. It does make predicting the market very difficult, you know, because it's one of these things in hindsight is very... I mean, in hindsight, maybe you say promo packs, maybe in hindsight you say people, I don't know, there's loads of promo cards or whatever, I don't know. But, um, you know, without knowing that in hindsight, predicting the market then makes it quite difficult if it's not going to be, uh, trend, you know, the same as the uh, the previous years. Now, I do expect the same as what we saw last year, uh, last week, sorry, in terms of the market rising Friday, uh, sorry, rising Sunday, probably to, through to about Tuesday. You might even go and get Thursday evening as a, as a bit of a high. I mean, would she hire... Yeah, she was higher Thursday evening than she was Tuesday. So I do think on holding out of pack specials and 100k plus cards, I would probably hold through to Thursday evening. But yeah, it's just a bit weird that they didn't follow the trends. Another trend that's kind of been a bit annoying was Griezmann. Now, Griezmann, uh, last year, if you guys don't know, got a trailblazer. So he basically went out of packs at the exact same time last year as he did this year. Well, if we have a little look how he did our packs last year, he did very nicely. He went from 202k all the way up there to 127. So he went up 25k. And... In all fairness, though, uh, I guess he didn't actually rise up until the Monday. Yeah, the problem we have is that Griezmann just hasn't been amazing at PAX. Obviously, he went out of PAX there, and he's been plateauing here. Now, one of the reasons this can be credited to is that Morgan, obviously, we only got the Morgan SBC. Because we've got the Morgan SBC, people are changing up their attacks. And, you know, obviously, Griezmann went out quite nicely because everyone's building French teams. So, people are building away from French teams. Obviously, that can hinder his rise. But, again, we do expect this card rising going into Friday. It's just uh, been a little bit underwhelming. Bear in mind, we were expecting the whole market to go and rise. Again, even cards like Ferland Mendy. Now, I will be, yeah, I mean, what's that, Davey? Uh, we look at Ferland Mendy. Even since Friday, he's dropped. Now, he hasn't been too bad, which is quite nice. But, um, yeah, still, the market last year, again, I can go and grab Ferland Mendy again. Ferland Mendy would have been out of packs. These cards just rose from Friday. Uh, and again, the, last year, they, you know, so every, like, I guess the weekend league so far has kind of followed last year's trends. So it was very surprising. So if we can go and grab last year, here's last year. The market rise Friday or Saturday. For Ferland Mendy, actually, kind of plateaued a bit. 
but we saw the market rising, whereas obviously here we've just seen it drop since Friday. So um, again, we think it'll be the cheapest today. Should minimum rise till Tuesday, maybe even minimum rise through to Thursday. Uh, just talk a little bit about how the current promo cards have reacted. Road to Knockout Stage Team 2, they've been a mixed bag. Um, obviously, you know, if I'm recommending people to invest in them, uh, the, the, you know, they didn't go up initially. I've been absolutely bombarded with questions about selling them. The thing with Road to Knockout Stages is they did rise for 10 days. And what I think what I think's happened is Road to Knockout Stage Team 1 rose so, so fast out of packs. And because they rose so fast out of packs, people went, well, duh, I'll go buy Road to Knockout Stage Team 2. But I think because now there's been a lot more people investing in them, and they haven't seen that first 24, 48 hours boom like we did on DeMarco, like we saw on Watkins, like we saw on Sesco. I think a lot of people are going, oh, the investment has failed then. And they've gone and sold their cards. And I think as a result, also I'd say, you know, previously the market was very progressive last year. And like I said earlier, the market hasn't risen. So because the market hasn't risen, these have probably taken a bit of a hit on that. Whereas if the whole market is rising, then the rarer cards should do even better. Um, but yeah, so, I'd say these, these haven't really been... Uh, too amazing. I'd still be very patient on them. I still think these cards can do really, really well. I even recommend people still investing in them because they're very nice, safe cards. And we know that these live cards, the closer you get to that game where they get upgraded, the more they go and uh, rise. So, um, yeah, so I wouldn't worry too much about them. They've been a little bit all over the shop. Gusto's done really well. Garnacci obviously has been a little bit questionable, especially with the, uh, the Sterling that's coming out. Loftus Cheek was looking really good, but obviously then it's plateaued a bit. But I would, uh, I'd say very patient with these cards right here. But there you go, that means you're looking at a few other cards. Uh, some other cards I think have kind of underperformed what we expect them to was Team Week 3s. Um, Team Week 3s were expected to rise really nicely as of the Friday. They were expected to drop out packs and then rise nicely on the Friday. What happened is, didn't necessarily drop out packs, but he's, yeah, again, he's dropped since the Friday. It's a very weird trend going off of what happened last year. Now, I do think Edmund Mittal and Van der Ven will keep rising uh, from today... You know, maybe for a week or two, until they're replaced by an SBC. No centre-back SBCs elite to come this week, so I do think uh, they'll be nice. Rush team, one interesting trend here. So last year, the cheapest time to go and buy Trailblazer, which is the promo equivalent, was Sunday. So we do think that these will be the cheapest to buy on Sunday. Now, I was looking to maybe go and scout these players. Um, what was it? I was looking to maybe go and scout these players during midnight last night, because we were expecting midnight last night to be the cheapest. Uh, and it does seem that actually there has been a good rebound yet. So I think we midnight last night would have been the cheapest. I think the other time to go and buy stuff, if you're not going to buy it midnight last night, who would have been a good card to look at? I think it would have been Ender Miller Tau. So this trend occurred last year, uh, last week, sorry, where they were the cheapest. There you go. You can see Sunday early hours. They then rose going into the afternoon as people panic sold them. But then they were equally as cheap Monday. So again, if you haven't bought the Total Rush players, I do think they might be quite progressive through the day. But I think you might have another buy time. Ran about midnight to early hours in the morning um, for these cards here. And again, they should rise through to about Thursday evening, Friday morning, and then drop out of packs due to um, people wanting to try new cards. I think that is about that. Uh, we've got Team of the Weeks. We've got Leah Williamson, who, again, should be a nice investment for Saka. Uh, the thing is, by the way, chat, I was... The oh, chat, the uh, YouTube. I was looking for Pre-Team of the Week, and Pre-Team of the Week has been abysmal, right? Bear in mind, we're in international competitions. and in international competitions, you've only got made-up teams smashing, you know, plebe teams. This just hasn't occurred. Like, we had France winning 4-1 earlier in the week, and I think that might make an informed Guendouzi. But apart from that, like, England lost their game. We then go to Friday's game, and we've got Germany 1-2-1, but there was no, you know, standout player to go and get a team of the week. Brazil only beat Chile 2-1, and I don't think there was any standout player right there. We then move to yesterday's games. Portugal won 3-1, but everyone was a different goal scorer, and there was an own goal. Uh, Spain beat Denmark only 1-0. We might get Zuba Mendy, but that's one team of the week. Like, Peru beat Uruguay 1-0. This team of the week, again, international is normally quite difficult because there's so many options. There are so little options on relevant players that, you know, like meta demanded players, SPC followers going out packs. Now, obviously, we've got Friday's games, uh, sorry, we've got Sunday's games and Monday's games. Not that there's a, um, a whole host of big, big nations playing. But yeah, so I normally would have loads of pre-team meat by now, but looks a bit dodgy. Uh, I mean, Monday's games probably will create a few team weeks. I say, you got all the way till Monday evening. Tuesday games don't count because it's too close to the um, team week coming out. Uh, in fact, Tuesday's games can count for the following team week. But I think that is going to go and wrap that up. Thank you very much for watching. Again, we do think the market will rise minimum from today through to Tuesday. I'd say Thursday evening uh, slash Friday morning. But thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video.